This is a short summary video intended to show the main features of working memory model. There is a companion presentation on evaluation of the theory. According to working memory model, information is processed using dedicated systems that transfer information from temporary stores to long-term stores and back again as required. The theory originated from the 1970s and attempted to provide a more accurate understanding of memory theories than other approaches possessed at the time. A key part of the theory is the ability of memory to compare long-term memory with present-time tasks. The theory also identifies specific areas with functions that help to understand the processing of information into memories. Here are the areas with short summaries of their functions. The central executive, similar to a filter, the visual spatial sketchpad, inner eye, the episodic buffer, similar to a judge, the phonological loop, inner ear and inner voice, and the long-term memory, storage for key long-term information. According to the creators of the theory, Badley and Hitch, some kind of decision-making area is required within processing that focuses attention on specific types of input. You could think of this as rather like an inner filter. Only information required to solve tasks makes it through the filter. The theory concerns itself only with visual, spatial and auditory information. Smell and other inputs are not significant enough to be addressed by this theory, it was argued by its authors. Visual and feeling information are processed using specific networks, and separately sound-based input is also stored using circuits dedicated to the purpose. Let's look at the visual system. The visual spatial sketch pad, inner eye, processes visual information and information connected with feelings or distances. If you mentally imagine a playing card, you are using your sketch pad to imagine it. You may see, mentally, images of objects such as hearts that use long-term information to imagine a present time object such as this card. Separately, there are the auditory systems. The phonological loop is an area that processes sound. There are two sub-areas, the articulatory control system, inner voice, and the phonological store, the inner ear. Suppose someone says a telephone number to you. As you hear the number, the phonological store decodes the information into the numbers. The inner voice puts information into a linguistic form, so you hear the numbers again as you repeat them, trying to remember it. If you say a telephone number in your head to try to remember it, you are using the articulatory control system. Let's examine the episodic buffer. In 2000, Badley and Hitch revisited the experimental evidence and concluded that a new area was justified, namely the episodic buffer. This area, it is claimed, allows mental processes to associate connected information together. If information in a film screen is rightly linked together, the episodic buffer will associate it together. Imagine, for example, a film scene with pictures linked with a sound and also with dialogue. If a phone rings, you will usually realise that the phone is not part of the film and you will answer the call. This is possible through the episodic buffer, which links together associated information, but judges which information is not connected to what you see and hear. It links the information together.
key to many of the situations described here is the ability to compare the present with the past. This is possible through the long-term memory. The long-term memory, as you would expect, stores information for long-term storage and information from this store can be retrieved by the central executive to compare with present time tasks. In the case of watching a film, long-term memories for language, music, feeling and visual information are all processed together. The use of many systems together is one of the reasons film scenes tend to be very memorable. Many systems are working together, so compared with other forms, films tend to be very memorable. That's one of the reasons why it is easy to remember large sections of our favourite TV programme, but hard to remember vocabulary lists for a foreign language we don't like. Thanks for listening, and there are additional resources that you can use to interact with this material provided with the links below.